Hello, my name is Curtis Goble, a master's student with Dr. Stein here at the University of Illinois. I will be presenting phosphorus and energy digestibility in enzyme-treated soybean meal. So as a review for the production of soybean meal, we'll first start with raw soybeans. Then the next steps will be either they will be cleaned, cracked, deholed, and flaked, followed by hexane treatment to remove soybean oil. Then we'll get our deholed and defatted soybean meal. Then our next process will be heat treatment. And lastly, we will produce our end product, which is our heat treated, deholed, and defatted soybean meal. For the development of Hamlet protein products, we'll take the same heat treated, deholed, and defatted soybean meal that we get from our conventional soybean meal process, and we'll treat this with a proprietary blend of enzymes. These enzymes will then be inactivated by enzyme inactivation process. Then these products will be dried, milled, and lastly we will get our Hamlet protein products. So when we measured our phosphorus and energy digestibility in these two experiments that I'll present later, we use several Hamlet protein products. These products were sourced from the same soybeans that our conventional soybean meal that we used in these experiments as well. So the first Hamlet protein product that we used is HP200, which is the standard enzyme-treated soybean meal. This is a product we used in our energy digestibility experiment. This product was processed at a faster rate, therefore we left more sugars and anti-nutritional factors, as well as an added fraction of fibers was added back to the product. So we'll see an increase in uh, crude fiber percentage in this product. The next three products that we use, first it was HP310, which is an enzyme-treated soybean meal. And we use this product both in the phosphorus and energy experiments. And this was sourced from a non-GMO soybean. And the reason why this is a non-GMO soybean is this Hamlet Protein Company is from Denmark. Therefore, the UK has restrictions in using genetically modified organisms. So to be able to satisfy their regulations, they have to use soybeans that was from a non-GMO source. So as you remember from the HP200, this was actually a GMO sourced soybean to make that product. However, these three products were sourced from a non-GMO soybean. The second enzyme-treated soybean is HP340, which is the same enzyme-treated soybean meal as in HP310. However, this has added phytase. And as you can expect, we use this in our phosphorus experiment to determine if the phytase improves phosphorus digestibility. And lastly, as I mentioned before, we use the conventional soybean meal. And again, this is the same soybean meal source as our HP product that was sourced from the same soybeans. So the overall benefits of using enzyme treatment is first, we inactivate our trypsin inhibitors. Secondly, we removed our anti-nutritional factors. First being antigens, as I'll express as beta-conglycanin or conglycanin. Secondly, we removed our sugars, such as our sucrose. And lastly, we removed oligosaccharides, as I will express as stachyose or raffinose. Third, we have increased our crude protein percent. And lastly, you'll see a tendency for our fat percentage to also increase. So looking into our analysis of our enzyme-treated soybean meal, as you can see, over the top, we have HP200, HP310, HP340, and conventional soybean meal. When you look at dry matter percentages, you see a tendency for the enzyme-treated soybean meal to have higher dry matter percentages. When you have more water taken out of these products, as you see, you'll have a tendency for the energy concentration to increase as well as your crude protein percent. Our GE, expressed as kcals per kilogram, we have 4,400 kcals per kilogram in our enzyme treated soybean meal roughly compared to our 4100 for our soybean meal. When you look at crude protein percentage, you see a much greater crude protein percentage for our enzyme treated soybean meal and this is again because we have removed more water so our, we should expect to see higher crude protein percentage when compared to our conventional soybean meal. When you look at total lysine percent in these products, we see an increase actually in our lysine percent when compared to our conventional soybean meal. And this again is because we have an increase in total crude protein percentage. For our fat percentage in these products, 
we see a tendency for an increase, but not a substantial increase when compared to our conventional soybean meal. When we continue with our other analysis that we performed on these enzyme-treated soybean meal, we'll first look at total phosphorus. And as you can see, we see a similar total phosphorus percentage when compared to a conventional soybean meal, and maybe even an increase in total phosphorus. And as I mentioned before, we were able to remove the trypsin inhibitors by using enzyme-treated soybean treatment. So when you compare it to a conventional soybean meal at 5.7 trypsin inhibitor units per milligram, after enzyme treatment with our HP200, we see a reduction almost in two trypsin inhibitor units, as well as when we look at HP340, we see a very substantial even decrease when compared to our conventional soybean meal. The two antigens that we expressed and analyzed for was beta conglycanin and glycanin. These are expressed at parts per million. When you first look at conventional soybean meal, we have 130,000 parts per million, whereas when we enzyme treat these soybean meal, we see a significant reduction in 3, 4, and 5 parts per million for HP200, 310, and 340. Similarly, in our glycanin parts per million concentration, for a conventional soybean meal, we have 420,000 parts per million, whereas when we enzyme treat these products, we see 17,3390 ,3 parts per million for HB200, 310, and 340. So we can conclude that the enzyme treatment was very successful in removing these antigen concentrations. So the additional benefits of using enzyme treatment was not only remove the antigens, but like I said, we, we were able to remove the sucrose, stachyose, and raffinose. I first want to direct your attention to the bottom of the graph where we analyze the conventional soybean meal that hasn't been processed with the enzyme treatment. So for the sucrose, we see 5.78% sucrose in conventional soybean meal. And as you look up across the HP200, 310, and 340, we see a substantial decrease in the amount of sucrose. Similarly, for our oligosaccharides of saccharose and raffinose, we see soybean meal at the bottom of the graph at 3.8% roughly for our stachyose and 1% for our raffinose. And as you look across your HP200, 310, and 340, we see a substantial decrease in our concentrations for these oligosaccharides when we have enzyme treated. So some of the implications, again, we can decrease sugars and oligosaccharide concentration in these enzyme treated soybean meal However, by decreasing these sugars and oligosaccharides, we saw an increase in crude protein and fat. So when we compare how the conventional soybean meal and comparing against how the hamlet protein products can be fed, as we know, the conventional soybean meal is restricted in wean lean pig diets, and this is because of the presence of antigens. However, when we look at the hamlet protein products, we can suggest that they could replace the high-priced animal proteins, and this is because we have removed the antigens. At the current time, amino acid digestibility has been measured in these products. However, phosphorus and energy digestibility have not. Therefore, it was our thought to measure phosphorus digestibility. For our objective of this experiment, we wanted to measure phosphorus digestibility and enzyme-treated soybean meal. Next, we wanted to determine if enzyme treatment of soybean meal compromises phosphorus digestibility compared to conventional soybean meal. I'll first discuss the Hamlet soybean products that we used. We used two of the Hamlet protein products, one being Hamlet protein 310, as I'll express as HP310, and this is our standard enzyme-treated soybean meal. The second is HP340, which is our same HP310, but we've added phytase. And lastly, we'll test this against our conventional soybean meal, which again is sourced from the same soybeans. However, this product hasn't been put through the enzyme treatment like HP310 and HP340. So for our materials and methods, we placed 36 barrows in metabolism cages. We used six diets with six pigs per diet. They were fed at three times their maintenance energy requirement. Species were collected underneath a screen that was placed 
underneath the cage that they were housed in. So getting into our results, when we look at the total phosphorus in the feces, we first will set up this slide. At the bottom of the graph, you'll see HP310, HP340, and conventional soybean meal. On the left side is the percentage of phosphorus in the feces. The yellow bar is the diet without phytase. The blue bar is the diet with phytase. So as you can see, the diet that contain HP310, when we have added phytase, we see a significant reduction from 3.5% phosphorus to 2% phosphorus in the feces. However, when you look at HP340, we do not see a statistical difference between the diets that had phytase added. Similarly to the HP310, our conventional soybean meal had the same results as we have 3.5% phosphorus in the feces, taken down to 2% phosphorus in the feces when we added phytase to the diet. So when we look at the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus, we see again the similar results with our HP310 or our conventional soybean meal as when we added phytase we have increased our apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. However, with our HP340, again, is the enzyme-treated soybean meal with phytase, we do not see an additional benefit when we add 500 units of phytase to the diet. So you can conclude already that the phytase added to the HP340 during the enzyme treatment is successful in maintaining the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus. So as we discuss some of the same points that I just went over in the last two graphs, again, our phosphorus in our feces was reduced when phytase was added. Pigs fed the Hamlet protein 340 had a lower concentration of phosphorus in the feces than pigs fed HP310 and conventional soybean meal, regardless of phytase inclusion. Without dietary phytase, the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus was greater for HP340 than for HP310 and conventional soybean meal. With dietary phytase, the apparent total tract digestibility of phosphorus in HP340 was greater than in HP310. So our second experiment, we looked at energy digestibility in enzyme-treated soybean meal. So our objective, again, was to test whether enzyme treatment of soybean meal compromises the digestibility of energy compared to conventional soybean meal. We used two Hamlet soybean products in this experiment, one being the HP200, which is the enzyme-treated soybean meal that was put through the enzyme treatment at a faster rate, leaving more crude fiber but decreasing our crude protein percentage to 52% compared to our 56% as in our HP310 and 340. The second Hamlet protein product that we used was HP310 and again this is our standard enzyme treated soybean meal. And lastly we compared this to our conventional soybean meal that we used as an X standard that again was sourced from the same soybeans that was taken out from the process prior to enzyme treatment. So for our materials and methods we placed 28 barrows in metabolism cages. We used four diets with seven pigs per diet. We had a total collection of urine and fecal materials, and these pigs were fed at three times their maintenance energy requirement. So as in our phosphorus digestibility experiment, our collection of fecals was collected underneath a screen that was placed under their cages, and then for our urine, another screen that had a funnel built into it collected our urine. So when we look at our apparent total tract digestibility of energy, our yellow bar will um, symbolize our corn diet, our red bar is our HP200 diet, our white bar is our HP310 diet, and our blue bar is our conventional soybean meal diet. And as you can see, there are no statistical differences regardless of the diet we fed. However, on a dry matter basis, when you look at digestible energy, for the individual ingredients, we see a reduction in digestible energy in corn when compared to our soy products. Then when you examine the soy products, we do not compromise our digestible energy 
and our HP200 and our HP310 that have been enzyme treated compared to our conventional soybean meal that has not been enzyme treated. However, on a dry matter basis, our metabolizable energy in these same ingredients, we do not see a statistical difference in all these ingredients. However, there is a tendency maybe for corn to be slightly less than our soy products. So for a few points to wrap up, our HP200 and HP310 in conventional soybean meal had similar digestible energy, but all were greater than corn. And this is surprising because even with decreases in sugars, oligosaccharides, and increase in crude fiber, we were still able to maintain the same level of digestibility than we did with our conventional soybean meal when we used an enzyme-treated soybean meal. Secondly, our metabolizable energy was not different among all treatments. So my take-home message for both experiments is Hamlet protein soy products can be fed to young pigs and this is because we have removed the sugars as I expressed with sucrose, our oligosaccharides, antigens, and trypsin inhibitors and still be able to have similar phosphorus and energy digestibility as conventional soybean meal. Therefore, these soybean products can be used successfully in diets fed to young pigs. Thank you for your attention.